Hi, I'm Brad at CES. It's getting increasingly harder to find quiet places to record in, so um, I hope the echo isn't too bad. My first couple of videos at CES were more targeted toward the mass market consumer or possible mass market consumer prototype sort of thing, and we're gonna get into the more higher end stuff. I got to visit the VR engineers booth, or Virgineers booth, something like that. And they had two very high-end PC VR focused headsets, the XTAL 3 and bits and pieces of the Somnium VR1. So the XTAL 3 isn't exactly brand new this year. It was kind of announced and released shown at CES uh, 2022 last year. But one notable difference is they partnered with Nofio, the same company who made the Valve Index wireless kit that is supposed to be shipping out to Kickstarters in the first half of this year. It seems that VR engineers saw how well uh, Nofio was received and they partnered together to make a first edition prototype, that is the key word, prototype, it's very uh, rushed together, to get a super high-end XTAL 3 headset working completely wirelessly on Wi-Fi 6E. And I got to try that. Not only did I get to try that, I also got to see bits and pieces and what looks to be the final design, at least the injection mold shell, as well as some visuals of the Somnium VR1 headset. So I'm just gonna give you some quick details of what I saw and kind of the experiences of the, each of these things. But first I wanna kind of plug my Patreon, bradsmells.com slash Patreon. All the CES content you're seeing here is not sponsored. I go here with all my funding from people like you, donators, or just pure YouTube monetization, which isn't very high sometimes. Anyway, let's jump right into the Somnium VR1 first. So Somnium Space is a company who has been doing this weird metaverse NFT thing for a few years, and it was even before the crypto boom. They do stuff like selling digital land and all this other stuff that I really don't like being involved with that much. However, they've been doing some really interesting things that I can't ignore at this point. The Somnium VR1 is basically something that they're trying to bring an open source hardware high-end kit to the market. They partnered with the popular 3D printing company Prusa even to make sure that they're doing everything right on that regard. Prusa is actually the 3D printer I use all the time at home, so when I saw that partnership, I started to pay more attention to them. So while they're just kind of there with their own weird sort of NFT crypto stuff, they're doing a lot of great choices and like actually getting people who care about making good hardware, um, whether it be for VR or 3D printing. Now, originally they were trying to do stuff related to standalone on their VR1 headset, but it seems that Qualcomm does not want to work with them, which is not uncommon these days. Uh, they've been very picky to picking smaller vendors to partner with unless you have huge volumes in advance, which is not exactly wrong of them to do. It just seems like they've been way more aggressive since the Meta partnership as well. So for now, Somnium has kind of canceled their plans of going fully standalone or any uh, standalone tracking system with SOC on board because they just can't. So they're relying on the SteamVR Lighthouse system, which for me, I prefer that. The design is really unique, and that's kind of the one thing I kept saying to them is like, when you try out and see so many different VR headsets with all kind of a similar type reference design, they all look the same, it was really refreshing to see their mixed reality VR headset actually look like something I've not seen before, except from the movie WALL-E. And while they didn't have a fully working headset that I can try on, they had all the components there, they explained all the different pieces and what they'll do, how each piece will be uh, open source or, or be able to be 3D printed. Not every piece, because Lighthouse is kind of a problem. You have to be very careful on what things you can choose to print and what you can't because of that tracking system. But overall, I was really impressed and happy to see all the different partnerships they've made. And of course, the one big thing that they did have to show off was not only they had the uh, displays that you can see the lens that they're using, which is also made by Virgineers, but they also have the cameras that they want to do the mixed reality pass through. And the cameras are like 4K each. There's two cameras, one per eye, to do a binocular vision. Obviously, they're not doing any depth correction similar to the Quest Pro, but when you stick your eyes into the actual optical test bench, you can see the other side as it switches between VR and AR within uh, like a timer. And the visuals with just VR were already really good. It uses very similar displays to the uh, Pimax Crystal and the Vario Aero. Colors were good, resolution was good, optics were way better than the Vario Aero and way more in fine tune than the Pimax Crystal because they're not trying to do the weird 
slot things in, slot things out very much. The FOB was more rounded than the Aero, which I've always complained that the Barrio series always had that letterbox FOV, similar to the Vive Pro 2, and that's always bothered me a little bit. So it was nice to see that. And yeah, the pass-through looked great. It was very high resolution. Um, it, was, it was just good, and it was high-end. It felt like a high-end headset, even though I'm not really confident they're gonna be able to make any dedicated software for that. They told me that the headset and all the optics and everything is around 70% done, but there will be some more work to do. So there's no like pre-orders or price information. They're just hoping to come in under the price of Vario Aero at some point. So that is something we'll keep an eye on even though, yeah, yeah. Now let's talk about the X-Tile. So I did see it last year in a very uh, sort of limited amount. They had a cockpit demo last year I tried and it's a very wide FOV headset. It feels like a Pimax that doesn't have all the weird sort of company policies and bad marketing. Uh, very similar design, except the, the lenses are way less distorted than the actual other Pimax that you he have seen, like maybe the AKX or for example. It's a very high resolution, very high end headset that is mostly targeted to military and pilot training and all those sorts of things. And the one thing I said in my Nofio sort of uh, tryout, which was a few months ago, was that the Nofio system worked fantastically well for the Valve Index. The one thing I wondered when I was doing the demo and I even said in that video was, I wondered how Nofio's system would do if it scaled up the resolutions and frame rate. And well, I would say that the XTAL 3 is pretty much a good example of how well this system does. Now it's also important to note that this was in a crowded uh, conference hall with many different Wi-Fi networks. But due to the fact that they were using Wi-Fi 6E, I noticed there wasn't actually that much uh, interference with the system. Now obviously it was not a perfect demo. This was a first brand new prototype that they kind of built together with the Virgineers and Nofio partnership to the point where it wasn't even anything that would strap to the headset. It was this giant box that you would strap around your belt. It was super heavy, super weird. It had also a, a whole other power system on the belt as well. And obviously the headset was super heavy just due to the fact of its design. But I was impressed that the visuals looked pretty good even though it was stuttery at some moments because it's just clearly early prototype design. I cannot complain that much and it makes me very confident that Nofio's system is capable of scaling up a bit. Even though they're running the demo at like the 70 hertz which is again pretty standard for the x 3 anyway. The one thing I really hope to see that Nofio does in terms of uh, we're seeing a lot of Wi-Fi 7 happen at this conference. A lot of routers are trying to be uh, shown off to ready for the consumer market later this year. And the one thing I believe Nofio said to me during my last demo was they do plan to scale up to Wi-Fi 7 at some point with their custom chips and codecs and everything. And I think when Nofio does that, I hope they get more partnerships because they've just been doing so well. They have just beautiful quality for wireless PC VR. They're the only ones I kind of trust at this point of doing it right at this, uh, at this moment, unless I see some Ygig too, but I don't think anyone's going that path. Anyway, that's everything I tried at the uh, Virgineers booth, which was also partnered with Somnium Space, and what I believe was also sponsored by the Czech Republican government. Uh, it was a very cool demo, and I'm very thankful I got to try out all these things with all the nice people that just, you know, are happy to see me. I'm happy to see them too. Bye.